So in the last video we went over how the Doppler effect was used to track the rotation of Mercury. So just a quick recap, if Mercury is up here sort of rotating maybe in a direction like this, then there was an observatory on Earth called the Arecibo Observatory, which I'm going to tell you about now. That shot a bunch of microwaves up towards Mercury like this. And the radio waves that, the microwaves that bounced off this side of the planet that's rotating away from the telescope got a frequent shift to a lower frequency. The waves arrived arrived much less frequent than they went out, the green ones. So you can tell the red spacing is much larger than the green spacing. And likewise on the other side, because this side here would be coming towards the Earth again, the Doppler shifted waves had a much higher frequency, something like this. So you see three total frequencies in there. You see F1 is the orange or the away, F2, excuse me, F1 is the orange or the towards, F2 is the red or away, and of course the green then is just F0, which is the original frequency that was sent out by the telescope. So all these things were deciphered and used to also calculate V, which is the rotation speed of Mercury. That's ultimately what the numbers numbers of these frequencies were used to calculate the rotation speed of Mercury at the Arecibo Observatory. It's a very interesting place. Here it is on the Google Maps. And so you can sort of tell here that here is the observatory right here. And it's sort of so big that it's actually sort of built into a, I don't know if it's a crater or a valley or sort of a natural landform in South America. There's a bit of a close-up right there. And so this is what the telescope actually looks like. So remember, it's not a telescope that you think of in terms of the um, visible telescopes that you would look out, maybe to spot a planet or something because it emits microwaves. And so what happened is this object up here is sort of the active electronics, and this part right here is just sort of a big bowl that's shaped like the local lamb form, but it has that, that parabolic shape, which maybe you've seen for satellite dishes or the sorts of dishes that help collect and focus radiation. And so what would have happened back in the day for the determining Mercury's rotation speed is this object right here would have sent these waves back down at the dish like this, and when they hit the dish, then they got reflected, uh, retained their same frequency. I'll do that thicker here. Reflected, and those would have gone back up, and let's just say all the way up, to Mercury. And then those waves that came back down again, sort of maybe the orange ones here that were uh, Doppler shifted to a uh, lower frequency, might have been like here. Those would have come back to the observatory also, reflected off the bowl again down here, and then up into the receiver. And the ones that were Doppler shifted on the other side of Mercury that got a higher frequency maybe would have been these over here. They also would have reflected off the uh, telescope dish and into the receiver also. And of course, this thing here with the wires and things is connected to, you know, probably some computers inside for that analysis. But this is where it all happened. So once again, the reds were shot up to Mercury. The oranges were Doppler shifted as this planet side that spun away from us. And the greens were Doppler shifted on the planet side that was rotating towards us. And so that's sort of all, how it all happened. And that's where the, uh, uh, again, the big result, 58 day rotation time of Mercury was discovered. So it's all just like very nice. And I think that you can also find this observatory in a lot of movies. There's one in particular, a James Bond movie, where they have a big fight and they start sliding down the bowl and all these sorts of things. But anyway, it's a definitely a uh, familiar um, scientific instrument, but it's a radio telescope. They had a little stunt a long time ago too, uh, November 16th, 1974. It's called the, uh, the Arecibo message. And I don't know really what it was all about, but what they did from the big dish that you saw is they just beamed a message sort of out towards this collection of stars here, uh, hoping that maybe there is some, uh, let me draw this a little bit better here. Uh, so maybe the dish was only like that. So when the dish was sort of aligned with this collection of stars here, they said, just hit the button and they sent a message out to these stars here. They sent a message. And I'll tell you what the message was in a second. But what the hope was is that maybe one of these stars in here would maybe say like this one right here, say this star right here. Maybe that star right there maybe had a little planet going around it. 
So maybe an orbit like that. Let's say there's a planet on it like that that's orbiting around. And maybe someone on that planet, as these waves keep traveling and traveling and traveling and traveling, would have detected the message. It's a way of communicating. Okay, and so here's what the message was. So it definitely looks like an old 8-bit Nintendo game or something like that. See what they have here, just a bunch of pixels there and pixels, and you can see what they're sort of doing here. This is the shape of a human maybe, and this is maybe the shape of the uh, Arecibo Observatory where it came from and some other things, but here's actually what they sent. Again, it's called the Arecibo message. Here's what they sent. So just a couple of things here, um, like number one up here, those sort of patterns there are the numbers from one to 10. Um, this graphic down here, number seven, is the Arecibo telescope. Um, this thing right here, believe it or not, number six is kind of a graphic of the solar system. So there's the sun right there, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and all the other big plants and things. And remember, this was a long time ago when you know high resolution and all high definition just wasn't available in there. And then as you go up to number five right here, Number five right here, you can see, well, obviously a picture of a human there, okay? And four, I think this part in here has to do with DNA and the helical structure of DNA and there like that. Um, and so on, I'm getting a little lost here, but I think some of these things here are formulas for sugars here. That's number three. And then number two here, uh, you can see sort of the numbers in here two and three and four and all those sorts of things. So those be the atomic numbers of things like hydrogen and carbon and oxygen, some of the really common minerals or elements that we exist here on Earth. So that was the message that was sent. And of course, uh, have they been waiting for a response? Well, I don't know. I don't know if they've been waiting for one, but it was definitely, uh, I'm just trying to word, write the word response here. It was definitely a publicity stunt because it definitely, definitely something happened is that when, you know, response question mark, are we waiting for someone to write us back? Well, definitely what happened, it takes a very long time for these radio waves to travel. Remember the light years again. And during that time, um, it's known that like this collection of stars, you know, would have moved all the way over to here. So they definitely missed it. And there's other people that said, you know, should we really, uh, even on sending the message, should we really be doing that? Like, do we really want to get the attention of some aliens who may um, find out who's sending this thing and come on down here and gobble us up? I don't know. But it's just a curious note of something that happened at the Arecibo Radio Observatory, or radio telescope. And of course, it was the same telescope that was used to find the rotation of Mercury using the Doppler effect.